Here we go. Ready? Oh, he's better than me. Yeah. What's up, everybody? I just want to give you a little breakdown on the uh, pattern of the um, fretwork that goes across the top again. <clears throat> this is essentially what it wants to look like, okay? And I showed you earlier how to transfer all this information onto your piece of wood. So, after you get this whole thing drawn out on the um, piece of stock, you, what I did is I just took the, the uh, Colt, the Bosch Colt, and I, and I just removed all this material. You could use a Dremel, you could use a carving chisel, you could use almost anything you want. But I just happened to have a Colt. My, uh, <laughs> my Dremel tool broke on the blanket chest, so I ended up buying a Colt to do some laminate trimming. Well, not laminate trimming. I was doing some work on the upper case, so that's why I have it now. I try to tell you, I buy stuff as I need it. One day we're going to walk around my shop and I'll show you how many tools I don't have. <laughs> All right? But anyways, here's the pattern. <clears throat> and here it is on the piece of wood, okay? Let me see if I can do this. Nice, huh? All righty. Now, here's the beginning. And you really want this stuff to die into the corners nicely. Here and here. All the way down. You can see that, right? See how it's got the diamond pattern? Then it skips, diamond pattern, skips, diamond pattern, all the way down. <clears throat> and it breaks it up evenly. Now you can see here is where I just use the Dremel tool, okay? Well, the Colt, whatever. And you see how I have to take all that material out of those corners? Now this is very, very sensitive, like ultra sensitive. In here, these corners, these tight corners in here. So what do you have to do, all right? You really got to take it easy. <clears throat> and it does get frustrating, let me tell you. And it's really, really important to make sure that you have some sharp chisels. Really, really sharp, okay? Um, that's what's great about having the Tormek right next door. Because you can just, as soon as you feel it getting dull, you just turn around, you hit it on the, um, the little um, leather wheel on the Tormek, and you are all set. So I've been messing around trying to figure this thing out. And what I found is that... Where are we? I can't really see, guys, so you have to deal with me. Sorry. Okay, here I am. The camera's off on an angle, because I have to get in there and work, too, so. Let me see. This might work better. One day I'm going to have a camera guy, guys. Don't worry about it. But, hey. You know, it's woodworking. I can show you guys this stuff. Alright. You see, I'm going to start with this inside one. And I got a... You know, I have a V tool, and I'm just gonna. This is the first one in the morning too, so it might be a little rusty. <clears throat> I just got here, so I'm taking the corners out. Okay, you see that? Where are we? Yeah, right there. On this corner here, and this one here. Now I'm just trying to take a little bit of the material out, so I, I relieve the tension off of when I go to jam it in there. I don't want too much material to be in there so it breaks. You know, this this part will want to break off really, really easily if I start to push down inside here, you know. So, I got a number 212 and this seems to have a pretty good sweep on it. See? It's kind of close. And I have a number 3, so I kind of go in with the number 2 first. Oh! Like, when you draw these lines, there's a little discrepancy. It's, it's almost impossible to get it a perfect eighth of an inch, unless you want to spend all your time laying it out. But the, this top line is more important, okay? Because this top line is the line that forms the mitre inside the, um, on the inside. So when you see the border coming in, you want this to be a nice point to have them all in the same plane. So if I take too much material off of this line right here, it's going to show on this inside corner. So what I like to do is stay off the line and just make this point tight and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll determine the thickness of, of, the, of the fret from the other side of the, uh, the piece of wood, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> this is kind of a hot angle with this uh, camera right here in front of me. That looks pretty good. So I'm just trying to, yeah, the camera's in the way. 
But basically, you know, I'm just going to do one that's out of the camera's way. You know, this one's pretty good. So I'll come in. And I'm just going to lightly stab cut it. On both sides. You know, stab cut one side. And then, you know, you can see the grain direction on this stuff. You know, see how the grain is all short grain here? And it's kind of longer grain on this side. You know, the grain is in opposite directions, so you kind of need to work these tools in opposite directions. And this is like the only straight line on inside this diamond, so let me get this stuff out of here. See, like, you want to just, just push it down tightly, but you can't because you're going to bust out that other side. So you kind of really just need to ask for a lot of patience for this day because, you know, yeah, this little diamond is probably going to take me, what, 10, 15 minutes? And <laughs> you saw all the fretwork. I'm trying to work over the camera, so. It's hard. I didn't know where else to put the camera, you know? You can see where I just pushed that in a little bit and it, and it dove into the side. So. You just got to keep going along, guys. <laughs> keep chiseling away. So, I'm just trying to get the material out. Now, you don't want to smash into that, obviously, you know. I still haven't decided yet, but I think I'm going to weave this stuff. So, one's going to go over the other one, you know. I just haven't figured it out in my head yet. And then I take the, where's my sweep? This one's pretty good. This is a funny chisel. It says it's a 516, but it's got a number 3 on it. The other thing I got at the bargain basement, but I paid top dollar for it. All right, I don't even know if you can see that. All righty. See, I just pushed it down in there. Push it down in on this side. And I'm really not watching the material I'm taking out. I'm watching the material that's being left because if it starts to move or whatever, then I know I'm putting too much pressure on it. And it just takes. Believe me, once I get going, I go pretty good. What? I have a hard time talking at the same time as working. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Alright, well that ain't bad. Now this whole area inside here, the, the flats, it's going to get dimpled. You know, I'm going to get a star bit, so all this is going to have a texture to it and it's going to look really sweet. So that took, I don't know, a couple of minutes and it's still not perfect. So when you think about it, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, you know, 30, 35, 40. That's 40 minutes worth of work right there for me. You know, give or take. So, there's nine of them. Well, actually, there's 18 of them if you go with every one. So, see, I mean, I really dig the diamond. And this is the beginning of it. So, this is where the, the like, the blocking of the door goes. So, it starts with a diamond, and then it's awesome, isn't it? So I'm about halfway done with just doing that work. You can see that I still have a whole bunch more to go. Look at that. Oh well. All right. No problem, guys. Alrighty. Hey, heck, huh? Well, that's that. Okay, I think I get this thing on. Yeah, there we go. Nobody wants to see me up close that much in the morning. Well, maybe you still. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's it. So I'm just going to go along. It's going to be a long day today to um, just do this fret work. And you know, it's very, very tedious work. And the challenge, like, once you do one diamond, the, the, thrill, of the, vic the thrill of it's over. You know, it's like you learned how to do it. You stab cut it. You made a cool little pattern. But... The challenge always is to do it repetitiously, like evenly, so it's all the same the whole way through. Because, you know, after about halfway, you kind of, it's a challenge to just stay on that line and not go too aggressive. So, you know, I, the more I do it, the more appreciation I get for these guys who did it before me. But I bet that, you know, whoever did this fret work just did nothing but fret work all day long. It's a lot different for a guy like me who doesn't carve or doesn't really do a lot of different things, you know, it's like, um, 
you know, I'm sure that they had a guy who did nothing but dovetails, and then they had another guy who did nothing but cut stuff. And the challenge for me and Steve and everybody involved is to do all of it, you know. And even modern day furniture makers that, that want to do stuff beginning to end by themselves, they really need to be a more well rounded um, mechanic with their hands to be able to do carving chisels and then, you know, who knows what, uh, scratch stocks, shaping, molding, veneering, um, you know, stringing. It's just endless. Uh, woodworking is really, really endless, and you need a whole arsenal of information, tools. Well, the tools kind of stay the same, and just a lot of different information to know what's going on, to be able to veneer things and, and do things out of solid, or even box work and plywood work. It, it takes a lot of, you know, information, little tips. So hopefully that was a half-decent tip. I'm just rambling, guys. Man, I got a, like a Richie Rich do going on today or something, huh? <laughs> All right. Hey, this thing's gotten less funny and more serious as we've gone on, huh? At the beginning, I was just kind of messing around and winging it, but I'm telling you, this project is very difficult, and, you know, it's been eight months or something, so <laughs> I'm tired of it already. But I'm going to drink my six shots of espresso, get my hands nice and steady, and then start doing this fret work. And I will check back with you when I uh, get ready to do all the undimpling with the stuff. All right? Okay. Today's September 12th. September 11th, yesterday. That was a drag, wasn't it? I was at school. I remember that day, like it was yesterday. To all you families out there who lost loved ones and continue to lose loved ones, you know, from that friggin' toxic gas and all that up in the sky, you know, tough racket, all you guys over there in Iraq, Team mac ain't forgetting about you, alright, so keep the faith, stay the course, whatever that means.